Welcome to module six of the Facebook advertising system. I'm Bob the teacher, the marketing educator here at Lead Pages. And if you're running an expert brand business where you are front and center, you're going to love this module. I want to introduce you to Amy Porterfield, one of our top partners here at Lead Pages and an avid user of our software in tandem with Facebook ads. She's also a leading voice in the effective use of Facebook marketing through community engagement. I've asked Amy to join me here in this part of the course to share some of her best advice for effective advertising using Facebook advertising to growing your fan base. Amy, welcome to the call. Hey, I'm so glad to be here, Bob. Thanks for having me. Man, you are such a great partner for us here at Lead Pages, and you really rock with Facebook. So I'm uh, really excited that you're going to be able to share some some fascinating and incredible tips uh, for our listeners and watchers in the course today. My first question to you really is uh, just to get some con some context for folks who have no idea who Amy Porterfield is. Uh, why are you so excited about Facebook uh, advertising amongst all the other options that are out there for people to grow their business? Facebook marketing is the most powerful way to grow your email list beyond any other social media site. And I can say that with all confidence because I've used all the social media sites out there. I've tested them and I've really made sure that I understood how each of them work in terms of attracting a quality audience and building your email list. And so when I started to use Facebook marketing or Facebook ads years ago, I started to see results instantly. But the thing is, it has only gotten better. Now we know that Facebook changes all the time and it can be incredibly frustrating for marketers trying to figure it all out. But when it comes to Facebook ads, I can say that Facebook ads only get better. The targeting gets better, the functionality, um, how you use the dashboard, the um, flexibility, all of that, they've put so much focus on it because they want you to pay to play. And because of that, they've made it better for us marketers. So I, I really believe that you can get big results when it comes to Facebook ads. One of the things that you just mentioned, Amy, is the idea of the changes at Facebook. And you know, it doesn't seem to, to go two months without Facebook changing policies or adding a change like uh, image sizes or something else. Um, so first of all, how do you handle those changes as they come about? I know that you train a lot on Facebook, but you're also using Facebook as your marketing tool of choice. Well, I'm going to ask you in a minute about the new upcoming changes, but just how do you kind of keep that in mind with the evolution of Facebook as it goes along? For myself and my own business and those of my clients, I try to keep a really simple mindset around Facebook. And when I'm on Facebook, my goal is to post on my Facebook page and connect with my fans. I wanna be that go-to source in my industry. And then from there, I wanna focus on building my email list. Now, a lot of things change on Facebook. The algorithm changes, you know, different features, and this works one way today and another way tomorrow. All of that is, important but not crucial. Meaning if you get really clear on why you're on Facebook and you get your own system down, these changes that Facebook makes are not that huge. People get really stressed out about them, but they're not exactly as important as we think they are. If you keep your eye on the prize and you're all about engagement and using Facebook ads to grow your email list, you'd be surprised about how you don't need to really stress about all these other changes Facebook is rolling out. So I just keep it really simple and I've seen big results from that. That's, fa that's fantastic advice and I, it seems to me that every time Google makes a change, Facebook makes a change, all these other make a change, they have the, re the, the impact that sends shockwaves typically doesn't affect people like you who are really about people because it seems like yes. all these companies are always just trying to make the user experience that much more uh, engaging and more connected. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about how big a role that fan page is for you when it comes to advertising. So when it comes to advertising, a lot of people would think, so you don't really need to worry about your Facebook page or your fan page and you can maybe post on it, but really the power is in the ads. And I agree to some extent, but here's the deal. When it comes to your Facebook page, the first thing you want to think about is if you can grow a quality fan base there if people are engaging with you. And engagement is really specific. If you can get people to click like on your post, comment, share, 
or click a link, that's engagement. That's when Facebook says, okay, people are engaging with your Facebook page, let's push you out into the news feed more often so people see your post. So engagement is important in, this, in the respect that one, it will help you grow your Facebook page with quality fans, and two, it sets you up as that go-to source. So the way I look at it, as I do pay attention to what I'm posting on my Facebook page, I post every single day, I get people to actually engage because one, it grows my fan base. And in my world, the way I see it and the way I teach it is one of the best ways to use Facebook ads is to show your paid ads to your existing fan base. And there's two reasons for that. One is that when you have a really quality fan base, when you've worked at growing that fan base, you have quality posts and they engage with you, when they see your ad, they're more likely to opt in. So if your ad is a lead generating ad, they're more likely to opt in. You'll get more opt-ins from your own fan base than you ever will non-fans. So that's one reason why it's important to grow that fan base. The second reason is you will pay considerably less when you target your own fan base versus non-fans with a Facebook ad. So when I target my own fan base with my Facebook ads, sometimes I pay between 35 cents and let's say 60 cents per lead, not per click, but per lead, growing my email list. When I target non-fans, it's gonna be considerably higher. So you get rewarded for actually attracting your own fans on your Facebook page. So that starts with engaging, posting regularly, finding the content that really matters to your fan base. Awesome. Now I wanna get into some of the nuts and bolts of how you run your ad campaigns. And the first question I have for you about that is, do you like to use your business page post to test out ad ideas before you run them? Uh, you know, running them as regular posts and seeing what kind of engagement you have, or uh, do you test out ads first <laughs> to see what will be more engaging on your fan page? We typically pay attention to what works on our Facebook page as a post and then use some version of that for a Facebook ad. So I think it's, it's that you make such a great point here that if you start paying attention to what's working on your Facebook page, actually going into your Facebook page insights and on that very first page of insights, you'll see which posts are getting your the most engagement and using those posts as insight to think, okay, if this is getting a lot of engagement on my Facebook page, Imagine if I turn that into a Facebook ad. So we do it that way. We use the Facebook posts as insight for what will work for our Facebook ads. Awesome. And when it comes to what you're targeting for your ad, are you typically trying to sell something from that ad or are you trying to give something away for free? Are you seeing any particular differences for your uh, overall growth? Oh, I'm so glad you asked this one. So I'm pretty passionate about this, and this is why I am such a huge fan of lead pages. 99.9% .9 of the time, I will not, and that's a big NOT, I will not promote directly from a Facebook ad to a sales page. I typically always lead, pardon the pun, but lead mm -hmm. with a lead option so or a lead opportunity. So what I do is I promote a free webinar, a free resource page. One of my most popular is 10 tools to use for your online marketing, so a PDF cheat sheet or a four-part video series. I often lead with a free giveaway and then once I get that lead, and of course I'm using lead pages as my opt-in page, once I get that lead, that's where I use email marketing to turn my new Facebook fan that is now a lead into a customer. So you will rarely ever see me actually promote or sell directly from a Facebook ad. It's not that it's against the rules or you shouldn't do it, but you will get a more quality lead when you actually give the giveaway first. Cool. And you have that top 10 tools guide. I also see you promoting webinars quite a bit. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the differences in your approach when you're uh, trying to advertise a free report or download something that has instant access as opposed to something that's a time-based event like a webinar. Yeah, so I get pretty strategic about that. You'll see me promote a live webinar when I'm doing a big launch. So one of my most popular programs is Facebook Marketing Profit Lab. And during the Profit Lab, the number one way that we actually get a high six-figure launch is to actually go out with a free webinar first. And for about two weeks, all we do is we promote a free webinar and we when we fill it up, we actually put a new lead page up and fill up another one and kind of do it that way for about two weeks. And on the webinar, 
I then promote my program. So once I've given away, let's say, 60 minutes of pure, really valuable action oriented content, then I'll promote on the webinar my program. And from there, then I send out a series of emails with the replay, and we use a lead page for the replay page. And then the emails to follow are all promotional to get people into the program. So that's when I'll use a live webinar. I'll use something like a recorded webinar or a PDF cheat sheet guide when I'm either promoting a smaller program. So after I send the cheat sheet, I might then send a few promotional emails about a $97 program. Or if I do a recorded webinar, I'll usually promote a $97 program too. So I use those smaller entry uh, giveaways as the entry point into my world. I say if you want to, if you've never experienced anything of mine, that's a great place to get started. It's a no-brainer free offer and a no-brainer $97 price point. So that's kind of how I look at the two. We're going to talk about ad design in a minute because I love your ads. They uh, always catch my attention. They show up in my newsfeed all the time, of course. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but so I, I wonder if there's a difference between your cold traffic, the folks that are not part of your uh, existing fan base, like your lookalike audiences or whatever other targeting that you're doing. Um, does that change the, the type of visual element? Do you usually include your photo on those still, or do you uh, typically deviate from having your own photo on the colder traffic advertising? Usually I always include my image only because images of women tend to convert mm -hmm. higher than images of men. So if I was a guy, I probably would not include a picture of myself to the cold traffic. I would just create an image that spoke volumes about that free giveaway. And so, but because women, we have the advantage in terms of people tend to click on those images more, I'll use my image to make it more personal and make that connection. But it, for the cold traffic, it tends to be not as front and center, where the text might be larger or the graphics might take over. Whereas when I'm promoting to my own fan base, my image might be a little bit bigger, front and center kind of thing because they have a connection with me already. So it is different in that respect. And if I were to go for cold traffic, I'm not against not using an image of myself at all. I do think it's something we've tried before and have had good success with it. When it comes to Facebook ads, and I'm sure you all know this over at Lead Pages as well, so much of it is trial and error and experimentation in the very beginning till you start to really see what works. So I do think it's worth experimenting. So let's take a look at a couple of your ads specifically to see you know, how you're actually putting these together. So on the screen right now, we have free training, how to create an easy to implement Facebook marketing plan that really works. And then there's a photo of you next to your Mac and uh, it's the picture is basically from a tabletop and up uh, and your hands are visible. It looks like you've got a ring that's visible. Um, you've got photographs behind you. Uh, so talk a little bit about what results you're getting with this particular ad and we can talk about the text copy above and below as well but just from that image perspective um, what's what's involved here that you've put together strategically that you feel uh, pretty proud about so what we've done here is this would typically be shown to non fans and the reason why we chose this for non fans is because it's a little bit more inviting it's in a house you've got the pictures behind you it makes it a little bit more personal I'm on my Mac like you said you could there's something interesting about seeing somebody's hands um, um, even like the wedding ring and all that, it just kind of invites people in. It might seem silly, but it's true where they get a little glimpse of you. And so because of that, obviously I'm working on my Mac, which identifies people, you know, the entrepreneurs love to work on the Macs and all that good stuff. But then of course we have the text and you've got to keep your text to a minimum because that's of course Facebook rules, the 20% rule with text. But right away we lead with the free training. It's no mistake that the free training is in the same color as my shirt, just to kind of bring it all together. And we make sure that we say what's important for my audience. Facebook marketing plan is something that they want. We do a lot of surveys. We find out what the words people are using, not Facebook marketing strategy. They want to know a plan. So we make sure that our language is really going to resonate with what my audience wants. And so from there, this image, like, like you said, like everything about it is very purposeful in the sense that we want to connect with them right away and make that personal connection. Awesome. So you have the, the Facebook marketing plan in bold. You have the words really works in bold. Uh, and I, all of that makes for a, quite an eye-catching uh, experience in addition to the photograph. Now, as far as the text above, 
uh, you have how to create an easy to implement Facebook marketing plan that really works. Join me live and I'll help you create a step-by-step -step Facebook marketing plan that you can use to figure out where to focus your time and energy so that you can start getting results. And then, of course, there's to see more. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. And is the step-by-step -step Facebook marketing plan line broken on purpose? Is that a typo? Um, or did you do it uh, for any strategic reason? Uh, what else has gone on for this particular text? Okay, so the whole really works is again part of a survey that we did where people wanted to know what really works, meaning Facebook changes all the time, what's working now, what really works, what doesn't work. So we played on that, putting it all in caps, it was very purposeful, and having it on its own line as well. So I'm glad you asked about the step-by-step. -step. It looks a little bit weird because obviously we cut off the sentence and started a new line, but we wanted to do that. We wanted the join me on its own line and we wanted Facebook marketing plan to start out the next sentence. We also wanted to end the third line with step-by-step. Step. Step step is very important to my audience. They want to be, they want their hand held and shown how to do it. So yeah, all of that is really, really specific. And then the see more, a lot of people say, well, who's going to really click on see more? Well, we've got our most important text right there at the top, but when you do click see more, you'll see usually three different bullet points that I'm going to teach you inside the webinar. So I actually add a lot of text in my ads and I just make sure that the most important text is before the see more. So yeah, all of that was very specific. I love that because it it's, serves as a pattern interrupt as well and disjoints people and catches their attention in a subtle way. Talk to us a little bit about this headline at the bottom then, free training, create a Facebook marketing plan that works. Sign up now in your domain, amyporterfield.com, and then the button sign up. Take us through the thought process behind what's written there. Okay, so the free training, um, right away, the word free, as we all know, works really well. And in Facebook ads, it works really well, just as it does any other place. So we always try to get free in there. And in my case, they're always training, so the free training. And this is the first time I think you'll see the word free. And so we wanted to make sure that it was somewhere prominent. And then create a Facebook marketing plan that works. We just took out the word really, but we've said it enough there. And then sign up now. Sometimes we put more text below the title, below the image. So we might say, in some instances, we'll say, if you are an entrepreneur, coach, consultant, or service provider, this is the perfect training for you. We like to identify who it's for. So we, we definitely test these different options. With the URL, sometimes it will be a lead page URL, and sometimes it won't. We just had to play around with that, and it's a little bit more advanced in terms of how we do that. As long as your name is somewhere in that URL, it is very important. So with a lead page URL, your name is still in there, and I think that's important. Yeah, so you've got amyporterfield.leadpages.net. Yes, yes. Cool. And then what about the sign up button? I, there's like seven or eight different options that people have. Uh, have you seen anything between the join or the sign up or the other calls to action that make you choose sign up more often or are you still we testing have. it out? So what we've seen works the least for us is learn, learn more. So, you know, I, I read an article about how people don't really want to learn. They want to discover or they want to take action like sign up or download or anything like that. But the learn tends not to convert as well for us. So we typically use sign up as the one that this is the one that we found will convert the best for us. Fantastic. So another piece of advertising that I love uh, the benefit of is the sharing and the comments and the community. So on this particular ad, uh, you've got 154 likes at this particular screenshot timing, uh, 10 comments, 72 shares. Talk to us a little bit about how you're tracking that or uh, what other information you glean from that and just the overall benefit of, of making ads that have that level of engagement. Okay, so this is this is interesting and I'm glad you brought this up. So when you are running an ad and you can run it long enough to get some good engagement, like some of mine will have like 2,000 likes and you know, 100 shares or whatever, and, and that's good. You want these numbers to be really good. The only challenge is that when we run ads now, we really break up our ads, meaning we would have we do it in more of an advanced way. I don't actually teach this to my beginners because I think you need to work up to this. But once you get going, what we do is we have one campaign for one ad set and one ad. So let me give you an example. We would have one campaign that might be 
um, social media examiner. We're going to target the social media examiner's Facebook page. So the campaign is called Social Media Examiner Mobile. The ad set is called Social Media Examiner Mobile. And then we've got maybe two or three different ads. We don't do tons of split testing with ad images. We usually find out what works and we just run with it pretty quickly. But anyway, when you do that, you end up with like a hundred campaigns. And that might sound crazy, but we've been doing this for so long, we're at that level that we really want to know what is converting. And so if we break it up at that specific level, we can see is social media examiner converting versus let's say all facebook.com or some other Facebook page that we're targeting. So because of that, it's a little bit hard to get these likes, comments, and shares much higher than what you're seeing now. But if we were to run an ad continuously, let's say for months, we do try to do that once in a while when I have, let's say, a recorded webinar that's going to a evergreen $97 program. We try to run that specific ad over and over again so that these numbers increase because it does make a huge difference. So you just have to think about your strategy and what's most important. If you're doing evergreen, try to use that same ad over and over again so you can increase those numbers. It's interesting that that happens for me personally as a regular Facebook user, seeing an ad like this that has 600 comments makes a big difference on whether or not I'm going to further engage with that ad. My one follow-up question to that is, how do you handle the trolls? Because a lot of times when I see a thousand comments, every third or fourth one is something that's negative towards the ad or the brand. Are you deleting those or responding to those? Are you letting your community handle it? What's, uh, What's the strategy behind that for you? You know, in all honesty, we haven't done a great job with that. And we, um, this last launch is where we started to pay more attention to it because you're right. Once the ad, especially if you're doing a big launch where the ad's running a lot, people start seeing it. And the people that are trolls or the jerks, quite honestly, think (laughs) they need to say something about it, which I never really understand how people have that much time on their hands to write those negative comments, but they do it. And so what I've done now is I have my VA, I give her a Google Doc of all the ads that are live. And so as you know, each ad has its own URL. So you can go to the URL of a specific ad and you can look at all the comments. So when we create a new ad, I give that to my VA and every day during a big launch, I'll have her check each ad and we do definitely delete the comments that are just ridiculous, you know, just rude and and spiteful. Got it. So I'm going to pull up another of your ads here, and I'm going to, we don't need to go as in-depth as we did that first one, but what are some of the, the contrasting points of this particular ad, and are you serving it to a different audience? Uh, what else is, is fascinating to you from the stats uh, of what this one is showing you? So for this one, we ran this one to my fan base, and as you can see, my, my face is a little bit more front and center in terms of closer up, and so this one was a little bit more geared toward my own fans, but here's what's interesting. We also tested this one for non-fans, and it converted better than the one you just saw. So with this, we saw that we were getting more leads, and our leads were cheaper. So on average during a big launch, I usually pay between if we're not talking, we're talking non-fans in this situation, between a dollar and let's say three dollars per lead. Once we get around three dollars, we try to switch things up. We like to get around a dollar, a dollar fifty per lead, but it's not always possible, obviously. But that's always our goal. And so what we did is we tested this one against the one you just saw, and we tested it with fans and non-fans. And with non-fans, we saw that this one converted better than the other. I think it's because that I think the image is closer and that makes a difference. Also the free training, it stands out more. It's in a yellow with a yellow ribbon. And and little things like that go a long way. As you can see, the text at the top isn't any different. The bottom is just a little bit different. You can see for business owners, marketers, and entrepreneurs who wanna create a profitable Facebook marketing plan, right there we're identifying who you are. When you do that, you actually save money because if someone that is not in your ideal audience sees this ad, you might actually save that click and they won't actually click it and you don't pay for it. So identifying who they are will save money for you as well when you do it right. But again, this one did convert better than the other. One other thing that we often test at lead pages, and I know you've heard this as you've done webinars with Tim Page and so on, uh, is the eyes have such an interesting impact on these images. So the first ad that we looked at 
and I don't know if this is any particular causality, but we have you looking right at us. And in the yeah. second ad, you are looking towards what you want people to pay attention to, which is the free training. Have you tested this same ad with you looking forward uh, with everything else the same yet? Or is that something uh, that you might have on the radar? We haven't, but we probably haven't because we learned from you guys that this makes a huge difference. And so we've probably trusted you right from the get go. But I have noticed that anytime I'm looking toward the text or toward the opt-in box, our conversions are fantastic. And so there, that really could be uh, one of the reasons why this one converted better than the other. Kind of has that Susanna Hoff's walk like an Egyptian vibe in this one particular. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Now, so the next thing about the advertising that really is an important part of the entire process is getting the leads to convert from click through to opting in. So let's take a look at uh, your lead page that you used for this and walk me through some of the ideas that go into your particular uh, landing page. So right away, we like to put a picture of me at the top because we definitely want people to feel that they're going to get personal attention. So right away, they're going to hear from me. We put my name under the image, and this is, of course, a template that you all created. And then from there, what I like to do um, is really make sure they feel confident that this training is for them. On Facebook, you're competing against so many different people. You know, ads have become so popular. The great thing is Facebook will never dish out 10 ads and once in someone's news feed. So you do get to, you know, stand out over other ads because they're not going to put, you know, 10 in a row. However, people are used to seeing ads and they know what to expect. So when they get to a lead capture page, I think it's important that one, you're speaking directly to them and you're reassuring them that they are in the right spot. So that's what we do with that little blurb right at the top. And of course we like when the opt-in is actually a button where then the pop-up appears. So to us, that's really important. And we've always done that ever since you guys have been creating these templates. And then we like to give bullets. Now in the past, I've given up to 10 bullets. It's just up to you in terms of how much you think they need. With Facebook marketing, it's a little easier. People are interested. They want to market their business on Facebook. If I can come up with four or five really, really good bullets, that's all I need. And we've tested you know, from four to 10 and, and they all work across the board pretty even for me. But I think if it's something a little bit more complicated or you're brand new to this audience or your topic's brand new, more bullets is actually a good thing. And we spend a lot of time on these bullets. We work them and rework them and rework them to make sure that every single word counts. We try to make them very conversational, friendly, and valuable. So every word counts on these opt-in pages. Cool. And is there any secret research device that you've been using to fine tune the language of, of these keywords, especially the ones you put in all caps or in bold? What we've done is, as I mentioned earlier, we have put a bigger focus on surveying our audience. And so when we ask survey questions, we use these words. We see what people are clicking on more or resonating with more. We actually do word analysis on our surveys to see which words they're using when I ask them a question that's open-ended and they get to use their own language. So yeah, all of this is tested in that respect. Surveys aren't easy. Obviously, when you have to grow your audience to get a good pull on those surveys and they take time to create. But what I always suggest is when you see other people doing surveys, take the surveys, pay attention to what they're asking. If you like the way a question was asked or if it sparks some creativity, I use Evernote and, and create an Evernote folder where you're just putting some ideas down for your surveys because it does make a difference. It's not easy, but it makes a big difference. One other thing I noticed is that you're using a template out of the box. So you've replaced the image and then you've customized your own text, but you haven't adjusted the color scheme. Uh, have you found any particular uh, specific results using our default or uh, is that just not something that you've tested yet or is there some other um, avenue of color that you are using or finding uh, results with? So two things. One, we have tested different colors and we just feel that this page right here that you're looking at it exactly as is, this has always converted better than anything else we've done with our webinar registration pages. So I do think that for us, the colors make sense. Now it's Facebook. So any color blue usually helps and yellow is a great color just to grab attention. What I like to do is I like to make a connection between my ad, my opt-in page, and my webinar slides. 
So a lot of the times, in, in these examples, I probably didn't do it as much, but I've actually created ads where I've used the same color in my ad that I have on my opt-in page, this blue and yellow, and my slide deck for my webinar is blue and yellow as well. So to me, because people are less trusting on the web, they're still getting used to me and, and making sure they can trust me, just finding those small alignments in the branding make a big difference. So I actually use these same colors in the webinar that I am teaching on this topic. So to me, it goes a long way. You're also using a phrase that we see often with, yes, claim my free spot now on the call to action button. Have you seen any particular results with any, any other phrases that make this uh, the obvious choice for you? And what other psychological triggers do you like to put into your call to action buttons? So we love this one because it speaks directly to them. We use the word free again. We definitely have seen an increase in opt-ins with this one versus, you know, sign up now or something not like the exclamation point, the word free. Those are very deliberate, the word yes. And so I always teach, and I learn this from lead pages, I always teach to get, get specific and creative on your buttons. Another thing we've done is actually use my name. So when the audience is coming directly from my list, meaning they already know me, sometimes we'll change the opt-in page and say, yes, Amy, I want it now, or yes, Amy, help me grab my spot, or whatever it might be. So sometimes I'll use my name in here when I have a direct connection with them, and we've seen great success from that as well. But I do think that the, the actual language in that button is just as important as everything else on this page. Yeah, it's really, really critical. So you're a really fantastic affiliate as well as a producer of your own materials. So I want to I want to walk through this amazing launch uh, promotion that you did for something that Michael Hyatt put out uh, towards the end of 2014. Walk us through uh, this campaign and so first of all, actually, let's take a step backwards. Um, why does affiliate marketing appeal to you as a business owner in the first place? Um, just to get that out of the way, because some folks who are watching this course may not have even thought of promoting other people's stuff because they're so gung-ho about promoting their own. Yes. Okay. So affiliate marketing is something that actually wasn't on my radar when I first started about five years ago. I really thought that I was just going to focus on my own stuff. But here's a few reasons why I do it. I usually do it, one, if the if I've actually taken the program or product I'm promoting and it's made a difference in my business, because I tend to attract people that are like me, trying to build a business online, coming from corporate and wanting to break into a new niche. And so when I'm attracting people like me, I know that if it helped me, it's likely going to help them. So I truly want to say that I always believe in what I'm promoting and it's helped me in some way. So that's when I can talk about it freely and openly and feel really good about promoting it. Another reason why I do affiliate marketing is because I can't create everything that I think that my audience needs. Lead pages is a perfect example. I don't want my audience to get stuck along the along the path of what I'm teaching them. And it happens to be that one thing I teach is list building. And because I don't teach how to create an opt-in page and I'm not techie whatsoever, I needed to find a solution that would move people to the next step so that they can continue to train with me. And so when you have a challenge, going to a product program or service as an affiliate that could fill up that challenge and make sure people are continuing to move on is really, really valuable to you and your audience. And so either I see a need and it's helped me, or I need to fill a void that I don't have already. And the third thing is, sometimes it is the most, or not sometimes, always, it is a fantastic feeling to think I've just given something of great value and I don't have to fulfill it. You know, we've worked really hard, all of us probably listening now, on our own programs, products, and services, and it's exhausting. So if you can actually promote something and make revenue and add value where you don't have to be fulfilling it every minute, holy cow, that frees up a little space so you can take a breather. So there's a lot of reasons why I do it. I, I love those. And I, I especially love the idea of filling in that gap of your own marketing and not feeling like you have to be the one-stop solution for everybody. But if you can be a curator or a connector to those additional solutions, your audience continues to attribute their success in those other areas back to you. So you teach list building, Facebook marketing, et cetera. You don't 
to my knowledge, teach a lot about mindset and productivity and things like that. So here comes Michael Hyatt, who has an established program and is making this launch, and it fills in with what your audience needs, but it doesn't require you to fulfill it. So um, so I absolutely love that that strategy behind that. So talk just a little bit about the, the ad campaign. I, I've got on the screen a ad that's showing up in the news feed, and then another one that's showing up on the right column. So talk to us a little bit about your, um, first of all, your findings of newsfeed versus the right column. When do you do both? When do you do one over the other? Uh, what's your thinking process around those? So for a long time, we didn't do the sidebar ads. And because recently Facebook has made them larger, so there's less in the sidebar and your ad is larger, we started to experiment with them more. And although we still get a better conversion with the newsfeed, the sidebar isn't too far off. So for example, if we might pay a dollar, a dollar eight, so one dollar eight cents for a newsfeed lead, we might pay a dollar thirty for a sidebar. Still really good within our range. So we definitely experiment. And again, when we set up our ads, we'll do one campaign, one ad set for a newsfeed, and then a whole different campaign and new ad set for a sidebar so we can be very clear which is converting better or if they're pretty close we're going to run both of them so i do now teach my students to experiment with both for sure now in this particular ad you have still adhere to the 20 percent rule uh, within the ad image you have free live webinar get what you want this year click here and then you have an image of yourself on the left and an image of michael on the right both of you are looking forward um, Talk to me a little bit about what, uh, when you're doing an affiliate promotion, are you always including that other person's image? Uh, what else are you thinking about when it comes to creating the images for these promotional ads for an affiliate program? So when I run an affiliate program, it depends on where I'm targeting. So for these ads that you're seeing here, we either targeted my Facebook fans or Facebook pages where they would be very familiar with me or Michael, meaning I was very careful not to target Facebook pages that Michael was totally new to them or potentially could have been. And here's a picture of a guy with me that people just wouldn't know. So I am very careful in terms of targeting when I use the image for both. This one converted really, really well with my own fan base. And here's something to think about. It's not always just about ads. There's some work that you want to do before you run a campaign. So for months before this campaign started, I was blogging about Michael. I was mentioning him in my podcast. I was posting about him regularly on my Facebook page. I had been at an event with him, so we took pictures together. I posted on Instagram. So I was already kind of feeding that funnel a bit. So when these ads started to run, it wasn't like, wait, why is Amy with Michael? So it's important that you look at your entire campaign, not just the ads, and think, are things kind of working together to really help you with the impact of your ads? So again, I was very careful in terms of who I targeted. If I was targeting a page that I was a little concerned they might not yet know Michael, I wouldn't have included him in the, in the actual ad image. And one other thing I'll say, that ad image isn't very sexy. Like it's, I, quite honestly, this one was done in house. We didn't send it out to one of our good designers. It just had to do with the timing issue and we were in a hurry. And so these still converted really well. And the reason I say that is I always want my brand to look good and, and I don't necessarily love these images. I think free live webinar looks a little funny up there. And the fact that we say webinar on the image but workshop below it, I really think that was an oversight. But I tell you this to say it still converted really well. So you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be you know, an amazing image you spent tons of money on. As long as your message is right, you're targeting the right audience, and the picture's pretty good, you're good to go. So just know that it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, I love that. And you know, to me, I'm not a big designer, but I, I know a thing or two, and having three fonts in that short of space is yes. like, holy <laughs> smokes, what's going on? Um, not the best thing we've ever done, for sure. <laughs> but, but that's awesome, because you know, as a take action, revise later kind of guy, I, I love that it didn't hold you back from getting a result that you're proud of. Uh, and that, that's really what it's all about. 
Uh, same thing with your your mobile, or not your mobile, but your sidebar ad. Um, there's a, a reduction in size that I think makes a little bit of a difference. Do you typically use the same uh, actual image in the sidebar versus the newsfeed, or do you try to adjust that in some particular way? It, when our bigger launches, when, see, that's another thing. Depending on what you're doing, sometimes you've got to, you know, make concessions in terms of timing and, and the resources you have. So for this one, in a bigger launch, meaning if I was doing the Profit Lab, we would have had a different image for sure. I think the smaller image, you really should do probably less text, less pictures. And in this case, we didn't because of the time constraint we had, but I'm glad you brought that up. If I were to do it again, I would have definitely changed that image out. Cool. Now, the text underneath of the newsfeed ad, I think, is really cool because it's a different sort of feeling than the ones we talked about before. You have yes. 12 months from now, you can be looking back on 2015 with a huge smile and a flood of gratitude thinking about all you've accomplished. Those are the kind of dot, dot, dot. Talk to me a little bit about this because this is uh, such a cool uh, attitude adjustment, I think, <laughs> compared to most yes. ads people see. And especially going to a program like what Michael does, uh, it seems not only does it filter right, but it seems like it just draws people in. It certainly draws me in. So talk to me a little bit about the thinking process behind this one. It does. And I'm glad you brought that up because we actually tried some ads where we pulled that up to the top and they converted just as well, pretty much even. So they weren't better or worse, but it worked for us. So here's my thought process with that. When I usually run Facebook ads, it's for Facebook or lead generation or anything like that, where I'm teaching something very technical. Because this affiliate deal or affiliate promotion was different, like you said, it's more mindset, it's psychology. I wanted to change it up again a bit and have a different tone. And because I was running this to my existing Facebook fans, I wanted them to hear from me in a little bit different way because it could be a little bit jarring or have them start thinking in a different way. I wanted it to stand out and be different than what I've done before because this is a different product. I've never promoted anything like this. And I will say, Financially, it's been a huge, huge um, success for our business and for Michael, of course, because it's a 50-50 split, but it's done really well. So I'm glad you brought this one up. That type of language and that type of language in my emails as well has gone a long way. So you've got a really sharp looking landing page for this one as well. Obviously using lead pages, it's the same template you've used before. Uh, so number one, uh, have you experimented with a lot of other lead page template designs and this one remains a favorite? Uh, or yes. uh, is there That's anything the else reason. that goes up behind that? That's the reason why you're seeing this a lot. So we have experimented with other lead pages. We've done um, another one that's worked really well is when you have the big image behind the opt-in box. Mm -hmm. That one we've noticed, and some of my peers that I'm in a mastermind with, they've noticed that that's actually converting even better than this one now. But that was literally just last month. Up until last month, all my peers in my mastermind, we have a small one doing all kind of similar marketing. We've all converted best with this type of template. So we just continue to use it. That's another thing that you know, some of my success in my business has come from, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I don't need to do it myself. I can always find a great tool like lead pages. And I don't always constantly have to be changing things. As you can see, even some of my text in this ad is similar to the text in the other ad about a totally different webinar. So when I find something that works, I try to just continue to repeat it until it doesn't. And this template definitely works. But as you can see, I have a little bit of a different tone again in that little blurb at the top. So um, did you reach all the big goals you set for 2014? If not, you're not alone. Most of us fail not because this is not the kind of language I would have used in a Facebook webinar, but it works because it's a different product. So really being mindful of that is important. And you also have in that blurb at the top, join me, Amy Porterfield, and New York Times bestselling author, instead of join Amy Porterfield in New York Times. I know it's a subtle difference, but uh, it seems to me that that will resonate with the audience more. Have you done any testing with that, or is that just something that you know has worked in, in past experiences? No, we have done testing where we, I was more in the third person versus personal, and we've seen an increase in conversions every time I make it more personal. So I try to, as much as possible, you know, 
talk to them as though it was just me and that one person reading it and we've seen a subtle increase in opt-ins which subtle or big or small is important to us so we pay attention to all of that another thing i think would be foolish not to discuss is the images being of you smiling michael smiling i've been working with coaching clients here at lead pages and some of them have you know they want to be very serious and professional and then i talk to them about lightening up a little bit and smiling what are your what what's your advice towards the uh, the images of people smiling versus being more serious uh, in, in your results? I am a huge fan of making it as personal as possible. Smiling to me is a must. I don't think anybody should look super professional or really serious in their pictures. And it's, it's funny that you brought this up because David Seitman Garland is a great friend of mine and he has a totally different brand and style than mine. He's way more silly than I am, always cracking jokes with his audience. And in some of his ads recently, he has a picture of him, I think at a football game, like cheering in the stands or maybe a hockey game. He's like obsessed with sports. And so he ran this ad and he told me that the ad where he's like at a football game, cheering, mouth open, screaming, and then had a little text in the image converted way better than his professional photos, even though he's smiling in his professional photos as well. So again, I don't necessarily think that would work great for me and I'm not totally comfortable with it, but you've got to experiment to see what works best for you and what feels right. So there's no black or, wh or white in terms of what's, you know, right or wrong you've got to experiment yeah that's <laughs> funny because we we often find that over and over again tim page has talked to so many people on conversion cast about the same topic and the more casual without looking like a slob or a bum <laughs> but the more casual yes. in real life image that you can get we we see uh really great results from that so speaking of split testing you have the opportunity with lead pages obviously to, to run some split tests do you have any advice for our facebook advertisers on split testing on Facebook and then split testing the landing pages? What would they start with first, uh, in your opinion? So what I would start with is the ad. If you are just starting out or if you're somewhere in the middle, you've been doing it for a while, but you want bigger results, do not get crazy with your split testing. And this is my own personal opinion, but I've taught this for many years now. And what I've noticed is some of my students will have like 20 different split tests going on. And it is so confusing and overwhelming that you really miss the mark in terms of what matters. So what we do, and we actually don't do tons and tons of split testing, we will split test, let's say three different ad images. We will split test for about 48 hours, see which one is converting the best and stop the other two. And then we just go with it. And as long as we're happy, we only focus on cost per lead. We don't even care about cost per click. We don't really look at frequency that much. We look at cost per lead. And if we're happy with that, we add more money to the campaign until, you know, things start to change. And it always changes. You'll see one day you're paying $2 per lead. Within 24 hours, it might be down to a dollar. And 24 hours from there, it might go up a little. So you've got to watch it. But again, we do not do extensive, extensive split testing as long as we're happy with our results. Once we split test our ads and we find that, let's say one or two ads that are converting the best and just stick with them, then we'll start to split test our lead pages. And we usually only split between two different designs. And so from that, we'll go about 48 hours, sometimes a little bit more and just stop the one that's not working and focus on the one that is. And to me, because we're marketers and entrepreneurs with so much going on, most of the people I work with, they've got a lean team, either it's them and maybe one other person or a really small team. You don't have the bandwidth to do extensive split testing. When I'm working with someone just starting out, we'll have them just split test two different templates. But when we get a little bit more advanced, we might actually take the template you're seeing here with you know, the blue and the, the yellow, and we will change the colors. And that will be the only thing we'll do just to see which one converts better. Once we find one, we'll then stick to the color that's working and we might change in this webinar you will discover to here's what you'll learn. Like little subtle things, but we get it very specific so that we know, oh, this is what is the only thing that's different. So this must be what's converting better than the other. One of the things I love that you're talking to here that uh, we strive to educate our lead pages customers on is, is iterative split testing. So split testing, finding an answer, and then testing again and finding a better solution, better yes. conversion rate than testing again, then testing again. I've seen in the, uh, the results of some of our customers, they initially had like a 10.7% 
opt-in rate, and they got up to 28%, and that's something to be excited about. But then they can they tested again, and they got up to 50%, five uh. zero, and it's just so incredible that people forget how much power there is in improving conversion simply by iterating those split tests. It's so true, and and it's something that I really need to hit home with my audience because the difference between 28% conversion and 50% conversion, especially when you're paying for ads to get traffic there, is huge. So I do think it's so very important to do that type of split testing you're talking about. Yeah, and that definitely reduces your cost per lead just by testing things out. You don't have to worry so much about what you're targeting, et cetera. My final question I wanted to, to, to ask you about is about targeting. Facebook has so many options now about targeting behaviors and interests and locations and demographics and activity on, on the web. It's, it's really overwhelming to be honest. So what are some of the maybe top three uh, areas that you want to encourage people to be focusing in on when it comes to targeting? Okay, so I'm pretty passionate about targeting with Facebook ads. So the first thing I always say is, for years now, I've always been targeting other Facebook pages, so interests. So when you're in the ads dashboard, there's that section for interest. You can type in the name of a Facebook page and target those fans. And although since then, so let's say five years ago I was doing that, and since then Facebook has created custom audiences and lookalike audiences and retargeting ads, all of those really important. I'll talk about those in a moment and how we use them, but I still always come back to interest. So every single campaign I've ever RAM always is targeting different Facebook pages and I've become a connoisseur of different Facebook pages whereas in Evernote I have different categories and every time I come across a page that would be good to target I put it in there because you never know when you're going to want to remember something or come back to it so be a student of other Facebook pages that you could possibly target create a library for yourself and you will then remember when it's time to target for something specific, you have something to pull from. Trying to remember off the top of your head is almost impossible. So that's one thing that I really think everybody should do is target other Facebook pages, become a student of it, create your own library, let's say inside of Evernote. The next thing is we definitely should always focus on targeting our own fan base. Seems really simple, but the thing is you want to focus on growing your fan base. And so obviously you could run like ads to grow your fan base or just really getting specific, telling your email mark or your email list to like you on Facebook because you wanna be everywhere where it matters. Doing anything you can, adding a like box to your website. Um, also when you run, unpublished page post ads, these examples that we've been showing you, you get that like page button in an ad when you're running to non-fans. The reason I have so many Facebook fans is because I've been running ads for years now, and when a non-fan sees my ad in their newsfeed, they have the option to also like my page. That has made a huge difference in my fan base. So thinking of ways to actually grow your own fan base and then targeting only your fans with one campaign, you're going to see cheaper ads and better quality leads. So I think that's important not to forget about. And then the third thing that we've seen awesome results with is retargeting. And so when somebody comes to our lead page and they do not opt in, they will likely see an opportunity to opt in within 24 hours. And that has dramatically increased our conversions for our different campaigns that we run. That's cool. Is there a particular practice that you also have with those fan pages that you you target as interest where you will go participate in that fan page as well to have some additional visibility or is that something that you'd recommend for others to do? You know, it's a great idea. It's not something that I've ever taught before. However, I guess it's something that I do naturally where a lot of the pages, we target a lot of Facebook pages, so I couldn't possibly get to all of them, but there are a core, let's say five or 10 Facebook pages that we always target and I'm active on those Facebook pages I'll like their posts I'll comment I'll give a shout out of their content from my Facebook page so getting strategic like that can go a long way so I think it's really great that you brought that up is there any other question that I haven't asked you yet that someone who is uh, new to Facebook advertising uh, really needs to know because you're such a good trainer of folks at the beginning uh, what else is, could I have asked you that I haven't in 2015, one thing that's going to be very apparent is Facebook has changed their algorithm. Surprise, surprise. But I think this is one that's going to stick for a while. And what they've said is if you are posting on your Facebook page posts that are very 
salesy. I mean, I'm, I know that's not an official word, but if you're promoting a lot, selling a lot, directing people directly to a sales page, having them click on a link to go buy, if you're doing that a lot on your Facebook page, just with your organic post, Facebook will not continue to put those posts out into the newsfeed. Now, when people hear this, they think, Amy, what, what do we do? Why We can't sell anymore on our Facebook page. And I'm so proud, I, I, this is me plugging myself, because I've never taught that and I don't think that you should do that. So when you said that you were making this free course about Facebook advertising, I love, I love that there's a focus on paid advertising. There's a time and a place for it. And so I don't think that you should post a bunch of sales stuff on your Facebook page, but I also don't think you should do it inside your ads as well. It is a perfect, perfect combination to use Facebook to give something away of great value, do that on your Facebook page organically and through Facebook ads, do it both and send people obviously to a lead page where they can opt in. That is the perfect way to use Facebook and that is the way that I've taught for years and have done so to grow a list of well over 100,000 on my own business. So I'm a huge fan and I believe in it and I've seen it work. So. I just wanted to throw that out there and make it clear. Yeah, you can't post as much promotional stuff on your Facebook page anymore, but you never should have in the first place, so you're golden. It's not a big deal. Again, a Facebook change that really shouldn't be that big of a deal because there's better ways to use Facebook marketing. So I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> Steps down and welcome back. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so really appreciate you spending the time uh, sharing some really fascinating insider knowledge behind your ad campaigns and uh, some great tips. Uh, some folks are going to want to know more from you and continue educating themselves uh, with marketing, list building, and Facebook. Uh, where can they find out more from you? Thanks for asking. You can go to amyporterfield.com. And I also have a course that kind of goes the next step after you learn these ads. And so Facebook Marketing Profit Lab is my signature program. I only offer it twice a year, but we get into how to create a great giveaway, how to use ads to grow your email list, and then how to write emails that actually convert leads into customers. So again, I, I don't offer it all the time, but if you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash FB plan, just the letters FB plan, you can sign up to get on the waiting list. I'll let you know when we go live again. But thanks so much for asking. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. And there will be a link below on, the, on this page that you're watching this course on uh, that you can click through. So Amy, once again, on behalf of all of us here at Lead Pages, we really appreciate uh, all you've done as a partner. And for those who've been watching this course on their behalf, I really want to thank you for uh, sharing such great wisdom and tips on improving their advertising campaigns. Thanks so much for having me. As you know, I'm a huge fan of everything you guys are doing. So keep up the great work because I love all of it. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Amy Porterfield and I hope that you take advantage of some of the strategies that she laid out for you. Now before you go on to the next module, make sure you've downloaded the materials I've created for you to ensure your Facebook advertising success. Simply click on the button below to download all the videos, audios, handouts, and the Facebook advertising system mind map. Just enter in your email address and let me know where we can send those files to your inbox. When you're ready, go ahead and jump into the next module and I'll lead you further down the path of growing your business with Facebook advertising and lead pages.